I'm looking at Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 10. Now, if you've been following along, you saw last time that Nehemiah and Judah have been building the wall, working right along. They faced the challenges and they've overcome the foes. But now they're running to a bump in the road again. And it says in Nehemiah 4.10, And Judah said, So the people of Judah said, The strength of the bearer of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. So, Nehemiah and the men of Judah have faced the challenge. They have tried with all their might to build. They have overcame much persecution from the enemy. But they have reached a point where they are overcome by lack of strength and the rubbish has made them overwhelmed. And there is more kinds of rubbish than just broken pieces of the wall. All kinds of other types of rubbish. There are thoughts of doubt. There's discouragement. There's enemies. There's mockery. And plenty of other things that are just plain rubbish. So let's talk about removing the rubbish. So you can continue the work. The first thing is, return to what God said. Now they said in Nehemiah 4.10, and Judah said, we need to return to what God said. Because a lot of what people say, and a lot, a lot of what we say ourselves is just rubbish. So you need to return to what God said, replace your thoughts with God's thoughts. The way God thinks is much different because he, he speaks from a victorious point of view, while a lot of times we'll speak from a defeated point of view. The Sanballat and Tobias of the world, the unclean spirits in the world, and even yourself will put thoughts into your heart and you'll end up saying those things. Just like in Matthew twelve thirty four, it says, Out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. You'll say defeated statements, like the people of Judah did, and these statements just do not line up with Scripture. These defeated sayings that we say. So you need to run your thoughts through the filter of Scripture. Over in Second uh, Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5, it says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You need to run your thoughts through the filter of Scripture. When you have a thought, think, does this even line up with the Bible? If it's a defeated thought, then it doesn't. You need to replace your thoughts that don't line up with His thoughts. Over in Isaiah 55 and verse 8, Isaiah 55 and verse 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Even when you think God's thought on it doesn't make sense, just take His thought anyway. You see, men will speak a thought of defeat, and the Scriptures can replace those thoughts of defeat, which are rubbish. God can replace those thoughts of defeat with victory. Let's look at a couple of verses. Matthew 12 and verse 20 says, A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. He's all about victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 57. In 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 57, it says, this is talking about when you get your glorified body, he says, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. See that victory over and over. Look at 1 John 5, 4. In 1 John 5, 4, it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 
So what's up with all these defeated statements you're always making? Defeated statements of that you can't do it. Defeated statements about how you're not good enough. That's not lining up with Scripture. You're good enough because you got the one that is good enough living inside of you. So you can do it. Whatever that God's got you to do, He's going to help you do it because He's living inside you. And it says in 2 Corinthians 2.14, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of His knowledge by us in every place. Say that you do something from the, for the Lord and you fail, but you tried your hardest, you still won. He, he always causes us to triumph in Christ. So all these words, victory, overcoming, triumph, it all goes along with serving God. So replace your thoughts with God's thoughts. Judah said this thing statement of defeat that didn't come from God you need to replace I can't do it with he can do it Philippians 4 13 the famous verse I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me you must replace I'm not good enough with I'm righteous in Christ many times a voice says to me you're not even good enough to be here and so many times I hear that voice that says you are a waste of space why are you even... These thoughts will come up to me in church saying, you're not good enough to be in here. Why are you even in here? All these thoughts like that. Or you don't even deserve to be in here. All these people are so much better than you. You just need to just go home and be alone. All these weird, defeated thoughts like that come into my mind. But if you read the scriptures, look at what the Lord says about you and about me. In John 1 12, he calls you, if you're saved, in John 1 12, he calls you a son of God. In Revelation 1 6, he calls you a king and a priest. In 1 Peter 2 9, he says you're a part of a holy nation, a royal priesthood, and you're a chosen generation. The Lord thinks pretty highly of you if you're in the Lord Jesus Christ. So all these thoughts of that all these people around you are so much better. I don't know if you have those kind of thoughts. I have thoughts to where I think everybody around me is so much better than me that I shouldn't even be in the room with them. And those are defeated thoughts from the devil. Now, you, you may have a reverse, the reverse going on to where you think you're better than everybody else in the room. And that's also wrong because... If you're with other believers, all those other believers are sons of God. They're a king and a priest. And when he sees them, he sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So no believer is better than another. And no believer is more welcome here than another. No believer is more welcome in the body of Christ than this other believer. So replace your thoughts with God's thoughts. Sometimes you feel like a waste of space. You feel inferior to others. Psalm 24, 1 says, The earth is the Lord's. Now this earth is the Lord's. It's not these other people's that you see around you. And I have to remind myself of this. When I start getting those thoughts of, You don't deserve to be here. This is, there. this is, uh, you know, you start thinking, Well, this person deserves to be there, but I don't. Well, this earth is the Lord's. It's not their earth. It's not their place. You see, you're His, and He wanted you here, and this is what God thinks about it. What you or what anyone else thinks is irrelevant. This is His world, and He wanted you to live in it. So what everybody else thinks doesn't matter. You see, sometimes you feel like the rubbish, but you have a treasure inside your vessel. Just like it says in 2 Corinthians 4 7, talks about treasures and earthen vessels. We got the Holy Spirit in our vessel. God lives inside me, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Your words about being insufficient are just part of the rubbish 
that needs to be removed so that the work can be completed. Our flesh is weak and the new creature in us is willing to work. So you put off the old man. The old man is the rubbish. Put off the old man as much as you can. And then at the rapture, God will remove the rubbish for good. Philippians 3.21 our vile body shall be fashioned like unto his glorious body. So you return to what God said, return to the scriptures, replace your thoughts with God's thoughts. You can remove the rubbish and you resist all doubts. The people of Judah said, the people of Judah said, so that we are not able to build the wall. Look at that defeated statement. We're not, they said, we are not able to build the wall. But that's what Judah said, not the Lord. That's what the devil and his men want to accuse you of not being able to finish the task. Just like back in uh, Nehemiah 4, 1 through 3, they were saying, you know, if a fox goes up, it'll knock down the wall. You know, how are these feeble Jews going to build this wall back up? But if your task is for the Lord, then you resist any doubt that he can't complete it through you. And when the devil shows up in Genesis 3, the first thing he does is put doubt in Eve's mind about the word of the Lord. And you just got to kick it, kick out those doubts that he's putting in your mind. That he's He wanted her to doubt the word. And that's what he wants you to do is doubt what God said. Return to what God said, replacing your thoughts with his thoughts, resisting the devil. James 4, 7, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. And any time a doubt pops up, just keep working and you'll be too busy to think about it. And you have to keep working in order for the rubbish to be removed. So, re return to what God said, and then the next thing, rely on His strength. Notice in verse 10, Nehemiah 4.10, the people of Judah said, the strength of the bearer of burdens is decayed. But you see, the work of God is through the strength of God. It doesn't matter if their strength really was decayed. You need to rely on His strength and realize you are weak. You are weak, but you're relying on His strength. There's no doubt about it. Their strength probably really was decayed. They probably really were tired. And uh, through your Christian life, no doubt about it, there's going to be times where you do feel weak in the flesh and you do feel tired. But then that just makes you rely on the Lord more. So, realize you're weak. Some of the workers were on guard day and night. It said back there in Nehemiah 4.9, it said they had to put some of the workers to be on guard day and night because of the enemy. And this took manpower away from the work. You know, sometimes it's Sometimes it's good to have less manpower. You know why? So that you rely on God more. Just like with Gideon. He had too many men. Back there in, in Judges 7-2, he had too many men. And God wanted less men so, that, so he himself would get credit for the victory. You know, maybe God's making things a little harder so that he ends up getting credit for the victory. Uh, confidence in self without the Lord Jesus Christ, is rubbish that needs to be removed. Paul, the Apostle Paul over in 2 Corinthians 3, 5, he talks about how he's not sufficient in himself. He talks about in 2 Corinthians 10, 10, his bodily presence was weak. He said in Ephesians 6, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not your own. You see, the strongest man in the world is without strength. Romans 5, 6, when it comes to getting saved. The strongest men without God are weak compared to weak men with God. Realizing your true strength is actually strength that is from another world will help you remove the rubbish because when you get tired, you rely on the Lord. And Paul said, well, actually, you rely on the Lord even when you're not tired. Go ahead and rely on Him while you're strong while you're strong in the flesh, and then that's going to make it easier on you to rely on Him when you're not strong in the flesh, when your flesh does get tired and you want to quit and you want to give up. Paul said, For when I am weak, 
then am I strong. 2 Corinthians 12.10 Because then he relies on God more. Your own muscles are rubbish. They're going to turn to dust. Genesis 3.19 So, return to what God said. Rely on his strength. And remove rubbish one piece at a time. Verse 10, you see, they, Judah said, the strength of the bearer of burdens is decayed. And that's rubbish. But you need to remove rubbish one piece at a time. Keeping this in mind will keep you from getting overwhelmed because of the rubbish. They were overwhelmed. You see, races are finished one step at a time. The people of Judah said, there's much rubbish. So they're, we're not able to build the wall. They're overwhelmed, you see. But that itself is a load of rubbish, what they said. Because is anything too hard for the Lord? Genesis eighteen fourteen. You see, the course gets finished. You finish your course by consistently placing one foot in front of the other. And with God's help, they could have had a place cleared to work in no time. You work on today... And tomorrow will take care of itself. Matthew 6.34 See, I can't put on my work shoes for tomorrow, today. I have to put on today's. So, it's one day at a time. You see, you start conforming yourself to Jesus Christ today. And you'll be a lot closer to a model Christian tomorrow. Much more than you would have been had you never even started. You see, a lot of people won't even start because they see this big mountain of rubbish in front of them. And they're like, well, that's too much rubbish. Well, you just start by putting one foot in front of the other. See, the rubbish makes people nervous about starting the race. But you've got to remove it one step at a time. And see, you run to make progress, not to finish first. When you run the Christian race, you're running to make progress towards something. You're not running to finish first or to beat this other guy over here. A working Bible knowledge is compiled one verse at a time. It's like over there in Isaiah 28.10 where it talks about line upon line, precept upon precept. And it takes much labor. 1 Timothy 5.7 talks about people that labor in the word and doctrine. It makes you weary. Ecclesiastes 12.12, much study is that weariness to the flesh. But a daily dose of Scripture will remove the rubbish a little at a time and then prevent future rubbish from showing up. And someone may get further along in the Bible than you or further along in serving God than you or further along in their prayer life than you, but you are both consistently chipping away at the rubbish, both consistently growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Second Peter 3.18. Removing the pieces that were conformed to this world and daily transforming yourself by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, 2. That's what you need to do. You and the other Christian are actually working together on the same team. Not to get ahead of each other. You're working towards the same goal. And any rubbish he removes is beneficial to you and beneficial to me because we're all members of the same body. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. So, with all that being said, do you want to remove the rubbish? Do you want to be the regular run-of-the-mill Christian that starts out with a full head of steam and then just quits in the middle of the work? Or do you want to keep pressing toward the mark for the prize? Do you want to have the joy that goes along with completing something for the Lord? There's always going to be rubbish in the way that needs to be removed, whether that be the faults in your own life, the words of your critics, or any of the daily afflictions of the Christian life. You've got to stay in the Scriptures so that you begin to think like the Lord. You've got to resist any thoughts that say stop and quit or give up or you're defeated. Just remember you are weak and rely on the Lord because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So when the rubbish gets heavy or overwhelming, you have the comfort and hope that you have the Lord and that He's coming to get you. And your labor is not in vain 
in the Lord. You got to remember that. That one step you're taking at a time every day, none of those steps are in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Each piece of rubbish you pick up with the right motive is like picking up a precious stone for eternity. Like, you may think that that's not a big deal, but each little piece of rubbish that you pick up for the Lord and get, and get rid of it, it's like picking up a precious stone for eternity. And 1 Corinthians 3.13 says he's going to try every man's work of what sort it is. Nothing that you do is going unnoticed. So begin removing the rubbish.